I'm Heather from Tiller. In part three of our Getting Started with Tiller video series, I'll show you how to customize your Tiller transaction categories and how to use AutoCAD to keep your spreadsheet organized and ready to review. But first, AutoCAD is Tiller's auto categorization engine. It's actually the only auto categorization engine for Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel. And it's one of Tiller's most popular features. While most personal finance apps automatically categorize your transactions for you, they unfortunately tend to get it wrong. And this is frustrating, wastes time, and ruins the accuracy of your financial tracking. AutoCAD is different because only you create the rules that keep your finances organized. Let's see how it all comes together to help you finally manage your money your way. All right, so the next step here is to spend some time thinking about your category. So we're gonna head over to the category sheet here, tab along the bottom in your foundation template. And you'll see that we have some example categories already set up in the foundation template for you. These are yours to customize. You can keep them exactly as they are. These are suitable categories for most people in their financial lives, but you can make them their own. You don't have to keep the categories that are here in the category sheet. So let's say that I wanted to change this to cell phone, for example. I can just quickly overwrite the existing category that's there in the category sheet. I can also add additional categories to the bottom of this list here. If I would like to have a category for yoga, for example, I can just add that to one of the blank cells at the bottom of the list. Each category should have a group and a type assigned. So think about the group as the bigger bucket and the categories fall into that bucket. So in this example where I've added the yoga category, I'm going to set this into a wellness group, for example, because I really can customize this. Being that it's in a spreadsheet, it's super customizable. I can make it my own. I'm not stuck with the categories that are given to me. So I've got my yoga category and my wellness group. And the types that are available are income, expense, and transfer. So this is an expense category, and I'm not too worried about these columns outright just yet. We'll come back to those uh, in a future video. And one other way to kind of think about the group and category structure is to look at the discretionary group. So we can see I have the discretionary group, and then I have several categories in that discretionary group. So you can kind of get a sense for how the group category is structured and that the categories fall into the groups. So. Once again, you can customize these, make them your own, add additional categories to the bottom of the list. Uh, one thing to note is that categories should be unique, so you can't have any duplicate categories, and you can have up to 200 categories within about 20 unique groups. So you really can customize this and make it your own and add as many categories as makes sense for you, but also just keep in mind that the simpler the list, the easier they are to remember. And so, now we're gonna talk about categorizing transactions once we've got those categories set up here in the category sheet. So categorizing transactions, once I've decided on these categories, is really easy. I can do that from the transaction sheet. I can manually select a category here from the drop-down menu. So in this case, this was, I think, snacks for lunch. And so that's gonna be restaurant. So I can just choose it from the list here directly. I can also just start typing the first few letters of the category. So if I just start typing restaurants, it's gonna narrow down that list. I can press enter, and then it's gonna move me to the next row there. So another example, here's a credit card payment, which I have a category for CC payment. It's just a transfer. I'm moving money from my checking account to my credit card account to pay off the balance of that credit card. So I just use this CC payment category. It's a transfer type category. This is a transfer to my savings account for my checking account. So I'll use a transfer category and so on. So I can spend some time categorizing these transactions. It's super easy to do manually just by using those couple options. I can also automate this categorization process by using AutoCAD. So to get started with AutoCAD, here in the Tiller Money Feeds sidebar, I can just click this Create AutoCAD Sheet option here. And this is gonna install the AutoCAD sheet for me. It's going to allow me to customize the way I want my transactions categorized based on a rule set that I built. So it gives me the most control of any tool out there to decide how I want my transactions categorized for me. So in order to get started with AutoCAD, you can just simply create some simple rules, 
The concept is that it's going to look at the criteria that you set. So in this example, if the description contains a specific keyword, so that's your transaction description, then it'll categorize it based on whatever category you choose here in the dropdown. So if we just look at our transaction sheet here, we can see, okay, Capital One, that's probably also going to be a credit card payment. It's probably going to be the other side of that transfer that I categorized just a few seconds ago. So if we just choose, uh, if we just take this description here, Capital One, and we add it in the description contains column, Capital One, and then we want that to be categorized also as a CC payment, we can just choose that in the dropdown list there. And then back in the sidebar, we now have the option to run AutoCast. So this is gonna run those rules against the transaction sheet to categorize transactions that match any of those rules. So when I click run AutoCAT, it's gonna start looking for transactions that match and it's gonna categorize any that it finds that match the rules. Keep in mind that the rules are processed in a top-down order. So you wanna put your more unique rules at the top of the list of AutoCAT rules. And by unique, I mean just maybe they have more criteria. You can add other criteria like if the account contains a certain name, like if I wanna only have Capital One transactions categorized related to business expenses, it's a way I could get more granular with those rules. It really gives me a lot of control. I see in the sidebar, it showed me that I had categorized some transactions, and then I see that it picked up that Capital One transaction, categorized it as CC payment. Same thing with these, which are also just previous months um, credit card payments. It also got this restaurants one because we give you that example rule of if the rest if the description contains taco then categorize it as restaurants we figured most people if their description contains taco then they're going to be eating at a restaurant so you can see it got a few examples here so now i spent some time going ahead and categorizing all the transactions from the past few months here with the help of autocat you can see that i have built pretty comprehensive list of AutoCAT rules here just based on the description contains. It's a really easy way to build rules. You can build some more complex rules. You can also build rules right from the sidebar using the create rules option. You can build simple rules just based on description contains. You can also use the advanced rule builder feature in the create rules sidebar to build more advanced rules as I mentioned before to get more granular with your rule set. It's really up to you. The description contains is a really simple way to just get going. So I've got all that transaction data categorized for the last few months. Now, how much should you really categorize? That's gonna be up to you. The more you categorize, the more insights you're gonna get about your spending. It's really gonna help you get in control of your money if you spend the time to categorize as much historical data as you can, because you're gonna gain awareness about where your money's going. That's gonna help you make decisions to help you get in control of your financial future but you don't have to categorize all that historical data that we bring in. You can categorize this week and go forward, this month and go forward. It's really up to you and how much time you wanna invest, but definitely the more time you invest in it, the more awareness you're gonna build. So in our next video, we'll explore the Tiller Foundation template and everything it has to offer.